Welcome to this short introduction into the JIDRA Software Reverse Engineering Suite. In this video, we will look at cracking a simple CrackMe called Easy Reverse from the website crackmes.one. Download the file and extract it using the password crackmes.one. When you run the binary, for example, on a virtual machine, you can see that it expects a password. And that password is exactly what we are going to try to reverse engineer using JIDRA. So let's go ahead and start JIDRA. The first time you start JIDRA, you'll be greeted by this short license agreement. Just hit agree, because nobody reads those anyway. Once JIDRA has loaded, you'll be greeted by the project manager window. We will throw away the other windows because we don't care about those and focus on the project manager. We create a new project by hitting File, New Project and select a non-shared project. Then we select a project directory and give our project a nice name. You can see our project is now in the project manager. To import a binary, we can either use File, Import File or we can simply drag and drop the file into the project manager. This will bring up the import dialog where we need to ensure that the format was detected correctly and that the other binary information such as the architecture and the bit size was detected correctly. For example, you might want to change the compiler here or under certain circumstances even select an entirely different architecture. In this case, we are happy with what JIDRA detected and we'll just hit OK and let JIDRA import the binary. Once the import is done, it will bring up this short import results summary where you can see the number of functions, symbols and other data. You can also see that a libc was not found and that there are six unresolved external symbols. We don't care about these in this case and so we just hit OK. Afterwards, we double click on our binary to start the code browser. The first thing the code browser will ask us is whether we want to analyze the binary. We hit yes, and this will bring up the analysis options. In here, you can see that JIDRA comes with a ton of analyzers. For example, an ASCII string analyzer that tries to detect ASCII strings in your binary. We could change some options, for example, the minimum string length, but we'll just leave it on default in this case. We'll also leave all the other analyzers on default. The only thing we're going to enable is the decompiler parameter ID, just because it often improves our decompilation results. Hit the analyze button and you will be able to see the progress in the bottom right, and you will also see some UI elements slowly updating. On a small binary like this, analysis is pretty fast, but on a bigger one, you might wait a couple of minutes. So let's maximize the window and start exploring. The main window in the code browser is called the listing window. It contains your disassembly listing, your data, and can even display images and so on. If you click, for example, a function in the listing window, you might notice that other elements update in accordance to what you selected. If you're having trouble with scrolling in the listing window, there's already a patch available on GitHub with a simple drag and drop jar file you can put into your JIDRA installation. If you're missing the colorful navigation bar from IDA, you can enable a similar function by going to the arrow in the top right and selecting Show Overview. This will show a colorful overview indicating strings and data to the right of your listing view. If you hover over a jump or a data target, a small pop-up will show up. You can disable this one by clicking the small pop-up button in the menu bar, but I personally keep it enabled most of the time. The next important window is the decompile window, where you will find the decompilation result for the function you have currently selected in your listing. The next window is the program trees window, which contains the different sections from the binary, for example the BSS and the data segment. Underneath it is the symbol tree window, which contains the imports, exports, functions, labels, classes and namespaces found in the program. Underneath the symbol tree is the data type manager, where we can manage data types and so on, but we will ignore that in this video. Then underneath the listing we have the console window, which we will also not use in this video. Normally it contains the output of scripts and other stuff. 
Another important window in JIDRA is the bytes window, which is basically the hex dump window, so it allows you to explore your binary in hex format. We'll make it a bit bigger by dragging the title bar of it into our listing view. This will merge the two windows into a single one, and you will be able to switch between them using the tabs on the bottom of the screen. I also like to enable the ASCII view of the hex dump by clicking the small wrench and enabling the ASCII view. If you want to create a new split, you can simply drag the title bar of a window until a small arrow appears. Drop the window there and it will create a new split. If you want to have a window as a separate window, simply drag it out until a small window icon appears. If you ever accidentally close a window, you can bring it back by simply selecting it from the window menu. So let's get started with reverse engineering this crack me. We search the symbol tree for the main function, which is basically the entry point into our program. We double click it and this will bring both the listing and the decompiler into our main function. As you can see, the decompiler tried to infer the signature of the main function. The good thing is that the C standard defines exactly how the main function signature looks like and so we can just copy it from the C standard. We go back into JIDRA, right click this function signature and hit edit function signature. We can simply paste in the signature from the C standard and you can see that the types and the names were taken over from our pasted signature. One problem though is that the square brackets of the argv argument were not treated as an array but instead as part of our function name. So we need to edit the function signature again and change it to be a pointer to a pointer. So we hit OK and we can see that this cleaned up our decompilation result massively. If we hit undo, which you've been missing for years if you've been using either, we can see how the decompilation result was much worse before we adjusted the types. Compared to IDA, where you spend a lot of time in the graph view, in JIDRA the main focus is the decompile view and the listing view. So you want to make sure that you use the correct types wherever possible just to help the decompiler get you a great result. So let's start going through our main function line by line. We ignore the declaration of SWAR1 and look at our if clause, which checks the number of arguments supplied to the program. If, as you can see, if you select something in the decompiler, it also gets selected in the listing. In this case, the number of arguments needs to be two. This means that we need to supply one argument to our program, as the first argument that is always given into a C program is the program name. To document this, we want to add a comment to this line. So we either right-click and select comments, or we simply hit the semicolon key. This will bring up a window where you can enter different types of comments. For example, an end-of-line comment, which we'll just uh, put in as EOL comment right now, a pre-comment, a post comment, a repeatable comment, which we will ignore for now, and a plate comment. We hit OK and we can see that only the pre-comment appears in our decompile view. But if we go into the listing view, we can see that our post comment appeared underneath the instruction, the UL comment appeared behind the instruction, the big plate comment appeared above the instruction in a nice block, and the pre-comment appeared right on top of the instruction. So let's remove all the comments we just created and replace the pre-comment with something more useful. So for example, in this case, we wanted to say, check if we have one argument. Remember that argc equals two means we have one argument and not two arguments. The next line is a string length. And so because we see that the string length is running on the first argument supplied to the program, we can give svar1 a more useful name, for example, arg1 or argument1 length. For that, we can simply right-click on svar1 and select rename variable, or we simply hit the L key. The next line is again an if clause that checks if argument1 length is equal to 10. And so we will document this by again hitting the semicolon key and adding a comment so we remember what exactly is going on here. And then we can 
already go up to the next line, which checks whether the fifth character, because we start indexing by zero, of argument one is an add character. And so again, we will enter a comment to document what we found and hit OK. Let's increase the size of the decompilation window a bit. And you can see that once we go through these three if clauses, we get our flag printed out. Otherwise, it will display the usage of the program. So we can double click on this and we can see the decompilation results for the usage function, which simply prints the program name and afterwards exits. By clicking the back button, we go back to where we just left and we are pretty confident in having figured out what exactly we need to do to solve this Kraken. We need one argument, we need a string length of the argument of 10, and we need to have an add character at the fifth place. So let's go ahead and test this in the terminal. We go again into our Linux shell, execute the program, and enter 1, 2, 3, 4, an add sign, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, we hit return and yes, we've cracked our first crack me using Jitra and that without reading a single line of assembly. I hope you enjoyed this short introduction and that you will tune in for more in the future.